Well, folks, he's in. Donald J. Trump is charging ahead with what would arguably be the greatest political comeback in American history. He has a lot going for him. This campaign, rest assured, will be unlike anything anyone alive has ever seen. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be complex. It's going to be tough. And it's going to be long. The former president has a diehard base. He has a record of accomplishments. And he has an axe to grind when it comes to the way that he and his family have been treated by the Democrats, big media, big tech, and the deep state. But there are significant challenges on the road ahead for him. Perhaps foremost among them is expanding his appeal even among Republicans in states he absolutely needs to win. Now, this is not a commentary on whether he should run or not or whether you should vote for him or not. You come to those conclusions yourself. Right now, Mr. Trump's electoral map may be shrinking. Being the underdog may be where he's most comfortable. I, I tend to think that that's the case. But there can be no doubt that the task ahead of him is formidable. It's not a criticism. It's the political reality that he faces. Georgia, for instance, could be off the table for Trump in 2024. He narrowly lost to President Biden there in 2020. And many Republicans in the Peach State blame him for driving down turnout in the 2021 Senate runoff elections that handed control to the Democrats. Republicans there were also irked by the former president manufacturing an unsuccessful primary against Georgia's popular conservative Republican governor, Brian Kemp, who handedly just won re-election. Mr. Trump then backed Herschel Walker, bigfooting the Senate primary there that will now likely be viewed as a referendum on the former president. Now, if Walker loses, that could be a bad sign for Trump's prospects in the state overall. Must win Arizona is also a state that may no, may no longer be in play for a Trump third run, another state that Mr. Trump very narrowly lost in 2020. Its governor, Doug Ducey, one of the most conservative chief executives in the nation, drew the ire of the former president. Earlier this year, Ducey opted not to run for U.S. Senate, a seat he likely could have won, setting up a primary in which Trump backed 36-year-old novice candidate Blake Masters, one running to the far right. Mr. Masters advocated for a national abortion ban, among other things, never raised much money, and Mr. Trump barely spent any money on his candidacy. In the governor's race, former Vice President Mike Pence, Governor Ducey, and a host of other GOP luminaries backed a likely winner, Karen Taylor Robeson, against Trump's handpicked candidate, Carrie Lake. Now, Ms. Lake, a former broadcaster, waged a very credible, very exciting campaign. The Keystone State of Pennsylvania is also likely a heavier lift for Mr. Trump this time around. The expensive, bruising primary between Dr. Mehmet Oz and David McCormick took the wind out of the sails of the GOP there. Oz, for his part, wasn't a bad candidate, but the primary campaign there allowed Democrats to define Oz, husband their resources, and irk enough Republicans and swing voters that Dr. Oz lost the pivotal Philadelphia suburbs. In Pennsylvania, as in Arizona, Mr. Trump barely spent any money of his massive war chest to help his own candidate. Trump could, could have a fight on his hands in New Hampshire as well. The Granite State's Republican Governor Chris Sununu, who is no fan of Mr. Trump, just won by 15 points. Trump all, lost all but two counties in the Granite State in 2020. Two-time Purple Heart recipient General Don Bolduc won a late primary and, despite coming on strong in final weeks, received no support from the former president. After his loss, Mr. Trump kicked the war hero when he was down on Truth Social, angering many of Bolduc's supporters. The former president also hasn't endeared himself to many folks in Virginia and Florida by downplaying the leadership of Glenn Youngkin and by criticizing Ron DeSantis. Attacks on the popular chief executives and heads of their respective Republican parties could weaken the former president's position in those states, not just in a primary, but also a general election. And to cap it off, Donald Trump's approval ratings with independents, women, and college-educated voters continue to be a challenge for him, according to recent polling. Now, look, two years is a very long time in politics. And some would say that if anybody can do this, Trump can. But winning elections isn't about big rallies and echo chambers. It's about building a coalition of voters that gives you enough electoral votes. The math simply has to work. Like many of Trump's 2022 candidates recently learned, there's no win in just winning a primary. Mr. Trump has proven time and time again that politics, yes, politics is the art of the possible. But stunning the political world again may be much harder for him this time. Can he beat the odds? Well, you bet we're going to be talking about it.
No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how, how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.